So people have been asking me to do a YouTube Q&A for like ever, and I feel like it doesn't really make any sense because I do topics all the time based on my opinion. But then I kind of thought about it and I'm like, if you guys want to see it, why don't I just fucking do it? I have nothing against it. And it sounds like it would be fun. Also, it kind of makes sense because if you ask the question, you're getting a shout out and that's kind of cool. It's like interacting with you guys. So without further ado, let's do it. I asked you guys to send me your questions on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and I think from now on I'm only gonna use Instagram if I continue the series. Because so many questions on Instagram, so little questions anywhere else, and I have my biggest fan base and most usage on Instagram. Let's start off with Twitter. Alex Ellis asks, would you consider doing a stream with only pasties on? Unfortunately, you can't stream in anything but regular clothing. This means lingerie, pasties, nude, bikinis, you just can't do it. Alex Ellis also asks, how big were your boobs before the implants? Big A cups, little B cups, around that size. Jonathan Spencer asks, which current world issues do you pay close attention to and why? Almost none. I feel like I don't have the time to actually focus on things like that and actually know the real facts, not the bullshit that the media is spewing out. So for me to make an educated opinion, I would have to spend way too much time than I have right now. But I do have opinions on certain things like feminism, animal advocacy, things like that. The new guy asks, maybe this question, will you ever make a Skype account where you talk to like a couple of fans at a time via cam or mic? This is maybe something I would do for Patreon patrons, but really, I stream like five or six hours a day, and I have the two channels, it's really hard for me to keep up with anything like that, and I like to keep my Skype and other accounts more private. Very few people have my Skype account. And that's like literally all I got on Twitter, so let's move to Facebook. Mike Corwin asks, favorite solo game? This is kind of hard for me, because even when I'm playing a single player campaign, it's so much better if I'm like switching off the controllers with Jay or something, where he's watching me, I'm watching him, and stuff like that. I just strongly prefer to do anything story-based with a friend. It's kind of like going to the movies alone. But in terms of a game that I've played a lot alone, that would be StarCraft. Because the only ladder system on that game that matters is 1v1. And my highest rank was Platinum. Most of the time if I'm gonna play a game alone, it's gonna be an indie game or a casual game or something. But the big games like the Assassin's Creed, the God of Wars, the Life is Stranges, I'm either playing that with you guys or I'm playing it with Jay. John Douglas Hodson asks, who is your best friend? Jay, duh. For like 11 years now. Enrico Secchi asks, are you happy? I can't imagine being happier, honestly. Like, I can imagine being more financially stable or having more free time and these things would, you know, inherently make me happier. But I feel like I am beyond blessed and every day is like a fucking amazing adventure of me doing exactly what I want to do with my life. So yes. Jason A. Sledge asks, favorite irrational number? It's gotta be pi, right? Did you guys know that pi written backwards actually looks like it's spelling pi? Found that out in Life is Strange. All right, now the big list of questions on Instagram. Epidemic12 asks, is why are you so beautiful a legitimate question? No, but thank you. Greg Teguire asks, what made you get into Magic the Gathering? I wanted to play Magic since I was like eight years old. I was playing Pokemon and I was going to the wizard stores, which are kind of defunct now. They have like the wizard's headquarters, but there's no like wizard's game stores anymore. And I would go there and I would play in the Pokemon card tournaments. Like it was like my dad would take me and he was really into that too. And we would trade cards and collect together. And he always told me that Magic the Gathering was a big kids game, kind of like D&D. &D, and that I couldn't play it and I could play it when I get older. And then time passed and Jay and I will randomly get bored of the competitive game we're playing and then we decide to play another game and Jay was like, do you want to just start playing Magic? And I'm like, fuck yes, I want to start playing Magic. And from then the rest is history. FNMs almost every weekend when I have the time, big tournaments, GPs, stuff like that. And I even top aided a bunch of tournaments and I have a little trophy from it too. So yeah, I really enjoy Magic. Something I love about Magic is that I didn't grow up playing on a computer. I grew up playing on console. So for me, it's still kind of awkward and I can't get up to the most competitive levels with things like StarCraft and League, even though I was pretty decent at StarCraft. But with Magic, it's like pretty much just a mind game. It doesn't have anything to do with my dexterity or anything, and I can just outsmart my opponent, and that's fucking awesome. Also, Garrick. Oh, so hot. Harris024 asked, why did you start making YouTube videos? My gaming channel was my first YouTube channel, and at first it was entitled Model Terror Babcock, and I would just like randomly upload stupid shit. And then I started uploading these like videos of myself not talking, because back then I thought that I sounded stupider than I actually was. So that was like something I didn't want to convey that I was a stereotype, so I didn't talk. But then when I started streaming, I forced myself to get more articulated, and I decided why not start posting actual videos to my gaming YouTube. Flash forward a year and a half or something, I decided to make a second channel because I thought vlogs were cool, I thought I could, you know, change some people's minds on certain things that I thought that a lot of people don't. I feel like I have really different opinions than most people, and I'm more real than a lot of people because 
I don't have all of the insecurities and that type of stuff holding me back. And then the vlog channel got bigger than the gaming channel and now I'm kind of just sad trying to make the gaming channel catch up. But yeah, YouTubing was just like a logical step after I started streaming. And most people don't do both as heavily as I do, but I love them both, so why not? X17JG asks, what is your favorite thing about making YouTube videos? Someone I once thought was wise who inspired me to start streaming said something like this. Make content that you enjoy making that you think is funny and chances are there will be people out there that feel the same way and enjoy the same things you do and have the same sense of humor. And to me that was so smart because it was like I'm gonna make something that I would love to watch that I think is funny and then share it with a bunch of like-minded people and then I create a community of like-minded people that I can share ideas with and it's like an extended family. So that's the interaction between you guys is probably my favorite. Bartana asks what have you done with girls? All the sexual things you can imagine. Bartana also asks, best and worst talents? Best talents probably involve creative things and sex, and worst talents probably involve... I'm really bad at singing, so there's that. I have no idea what my bad talents are. I'm like a jack of all trades, I'm decent at everything, but not really fucking amazing at anything, which can be frustrating, but it's nice that I can like do my own editing, I can draw a little bit, I'm decent at video games, I'm decent at this and that, I'm decent at pretty much everything, but I'm not like world class at anything. Maybe giving blowjobs. World classy giving blowjobs. Last question from Bartana is, have you ever cried over a guy? Oh, definitely. What fucking female hasn't? What gay man hasn't? What guy hasn't even? Multiple times? Often. But not anymore. I feel like I've surpassed that. I, I transcended the being taken advantage of and the allowing someone to fuck with my emotions and letting people into my life that actually would fuck with my emotions type of thing. So it's been a while. There's like a bunch more from Bartana. Let's do a few more from him. What is your biggest insecurity? I see insecurity a little bit different from something that I'm not happy with. Something that I'm not happy with is defined by me just having the drive to change it. And it's like a healthy motivated drive. On the other hand, insecurities are like things that I make myself uncomfortable to hide or I would lie about or things that I would like actually get emotionally distressed about when I remember or if someone brings it up I get all defensive and I have literally zero of those now which is liberating and kind of nice. And the second question, what do you like most about your physical appearance? I like the total package and that's what I'm working toward. I want to have a nice nose, nice eyes, nice eyebrows, nice lips, nice hair, nice boobs and all of that together is what's important to me. It's like the scientific proportional, geometrical beauty, basically. And I'm proud of how far I've come. Bartana, again, asks, favorite cheat meal? That would have to be grilled cheese and tomato soup. All right, let's skip to some other people's questions. Alana Larney asks, what is your message to all other women out there who are insecure of their own bodies and are not as confident with themselves as you are? It's healthy to want to improve yourself, but you have to get in the right state of mind and love yourself despite those imperfections. It's perfectly fine to want to improve upon those imperfections, but to let it weigh you down emotionally or physically is just wrong and you should love yourself despite them. As I said already, I guess. You should be your own worst critic though, and you shouldn't let anyone tell you that something you like about yourself is incorrect or wrong or ugly. If you like it, fuck them. Cupcake Miha says, what do you do to stay fit? Love you. Love you too. You're very pretty by the way. The biggest thing is to just watch your calories. You don't even have to work out in order to lose fat. Working out kind of comes in with like building muscle and toning and just creating the perfect physique, whereas losing weight is basically calories. I do cardio once or twice a day, but I don't have to do that. It's just because I like to eat a lot of food. So if you don't like food, you can just restrict your calories. But if you really like food, you have to do cardio, basically. And of course, the more muscle you have, the more fat you burn. Keith Henson asks, why don't you have a boyfriend? As I've said many times, I feel like the traditional conventions of a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship are not for me. I feel like they're restrictive in a way that doesn't make any logical sense. It's like restricting someone else based on your own personal insecurities and making sure that they don't have the life that they want to have for selfish reasons. And that doesn't make any sense to me. So tying myself down to one guy and restricting that guy's life in the process instead of just coexisting and having a great time together is something I'm just not interested in. King Jagger 99 asks, what's your favorite video game mascot? I'm assuming by mascot he means protagonist or video game character. Shao Kahn, by far, no one comes close. Kangbang81 asks, most memorable sexual experience? I don't know, I have fucking amazing mind-blowing sex literally every day, but if I had to pick one that I remembered for a reason, it would probably be the one I told you about in my sluttiest moment or whatever, where I threw up all over the guy's house, put period blood all over his bed, and got more drunk than I had ever been in my entire life. And he was famous. <laughs> I need to do sex stories on that one. But that was memorable for like bad reasons, so yeah. 
Sir Bacon Strips asks, if League of Legends wasn't around, what do you think you'd be streaming regularly instead? I would probably just get over my hatred for MTGO and stream magic forever. Or I would expedite getting a new house so I could get a paper magic setup. If I decided that it wasn't prudent to stick to one game when I'm streaming usually, I would just do Let's Plays. Play through one game, go to the next, play through another game, go to the next. Or I would try out every indie game that's ever existed. The G Monkey 123 asks, weird question, but how can I stop temptation to masturbate? One, learn how to spell temptation. Two, just masturbate. Snoot Dog asks, is your hair really that blonde? P.S. Love you. Love you too? And yeah, I mean, it is. It's not like a mirage or something, but my natural hair color is dirty blonde, which is about three shades darker. Lighter than my eyebrows, darker than this. Tom111GG asks, favorite Pokemon? P.S. Love you. What? Love you too. Favorite Pokemon has always been Mew. I am 100% all for the initial 151. After that, plus like Togepi, I kind of stopped paying attention. I was the biggest Pokemon fanatic when I was younger. I have like so much Pokemon memorabilia, but there's so many video games and things that I kind of just stopped loving it as much. But that time period will always have a place in my heart. Jim Leem asks, do you think women are more attractive to men who are overly sexual in conversations or just casually sexual with little innuendos. I definitely think the average woman doesn't like it if you're too in your face aggressive sexual. I think that it would be a bigger turnoff to me if the guy was ugly and he was doing that than if he was just giving innuendos then it would be kind of like fun flirting and it wouldn't be as like bro I don't like you. But if it's a guy that I like I would love really strong innuendos. As far as other girls go I would say be subtle. Josh Dodd asks are you a big fan of Star Wars? Since I was very young I've been somewhat a fan of Star Wars yes. I'm I'm currently watching the Clone Wars animated series, which is god fucking amazing. So amazing you get to fuck god. But I've always considered myself more of a Star Trek fan. Live long and prosper. Mila Eveline asks, what advice do you have for one of your 16 year old female fans? I remember high school and I remember getting bullied and I remember having crushes and I remember getting my heart broken and shit was just crazy and I was trying out drugs and there was temptation all over the place and the biggest thing I can tell you is to just be yourself and find out who you are. These are the most critical years in your life and if you want to try something, try it. But remember to always educate yourself, always think outside the box and never let anyone tell you who you are or what you want to do. If you're not ready for sex, don't do it. If you don't want to do drugs, don't do it. And as long as it's not physical abuse, all the teasing and people making fun of you, or boys not liking you, none of that shit matters. Not only like when you grow up, none of that shit matters, but like right now, none of that shit matters. Remember that. And learn to love yourself. Sanitary Sanchez asks, I've been thinking about moving to Seattle for a few months to get my Microsoft certifications. Do you know slash can you tell me where all the nerds hang out? Mox Boarding House is literally the best. Or Card Kingdom, but that's like a smaller version of Mox. It's a gigantic place where you can play board games and there's a bar and there's a restaurant, tournament room, miniatures room. It's pretty fucking sick. And you can accumulate store credit by winning tournaments and use it for the beer and the food. David Zafirovsky says, who is your favorite porn star? I fixed the grammar a little bit. As far as men go, it would have to be Johnny Sins. I'm generally disgusted by most men in porn. I just kind of ignore them and hope they have a big dick. But Johnny Sins is all right. And as far as women go, I, I like a lot. Like I like older porn of a lot of famous girls. Like, I like older Nikki Benz. And by older, I mean younger Nikki Benz. When she wasn't all, like, fake ass implants, pale, chubby, dark hair. Don't like that. Delta White, Jessie Jane, Riley Steele, Crystal Steele. But all of these people aren't making good porn anymore, so it's hard to say. There are a few chicks who have, like, really good bodies but really terrible faces or aren't really my style, and they're all right. So basically, I'm just looking for someone that has really nice fake round boobs and a nice body. Skinny, small, short. League of Girls asks, do you like Kim Kardashian? Kardashian. Kim Kardashian is sometimes really hot, but I'm not really privy to any of her, like, goings-ons. <laughs> her husband's gross, I can tell you that. Lord of the Chinese Mafia asks, are you and Jekko5, that's Jay's Instagram, actually boyfriend or girlfriend, or are you guys just pretty much friends with benefits? We don't put a label on it because it's deeper than either of those, but we are not monogamous, if that makes sense. It's the me asks, how often do you get hit on and are you immune to it by now? I do not get hit on very often, either because I'm maybe a little intimidating or because I always have a guy or guys with me. So the only time I ever get hit on is at the gym when I'm walking from like the treadmill to wherever the fuck and I have like no makeup on and they come up to me and I'm just like no no or if I'm like walking to get my hair done or nails or something like that and immune to it no it's still really annoying because all of the guys that come hit on me are not attractive at all I've never once had a guy that I thought was attractive come hit on me it's like so annoying I've always had to be the one asking people out young yozo says if you could research anything even on ethical stuff what would you research and why so I would definitely 
definitely say human cloning or animal cloning because that means we have an infinite supply of meat that isn't actually cruelly taken. The future. Marco Seer asks, do you have anything besides your boob job as far as plastical surgery goes? So plastical, it's fantastical. Yes, lips, nose, I've had a mole removed and boobs and that's it. Barzy Marzy asks, are you a lady in the streets but a freak in the sheets? No, I'm pretty much a freak in the streets and a freak in the sheets. Kenny's is shit asks, since you followed the Starcraft scene, what do you think about so many pros, Korean, retiring such as MMA and Flash around the end of last year? Flash was like semi in retirement already and then he came back and he was like amazing and then he retired and I didn't know MMA retired that's interesting but I mean they fucking get old there's like a cap on how old you can be even as a Korean to do that amazing in Starcraft so I mean it makes sense and it kind of sucks I hope that more Korean pros understand that they need to have like a presence as personalities so that they can continue to make content or something and have a fan base when they're not pros Metal Estad asks, would you ever consider getting into Legacy or Vintage in Magic? I would, just like I got into Modern, but I would want to play Legacy Merfolk with True Name Nemesis and that would just be god awful. Cosmic Snail 92 asks, what do you think of Ben Affleck as the new Batman? I'm a fan of him, he is the first comic book Batman we've ever had, the guy actually looks like Batman and he's absolutely stacked. Ben Affleck is my only persisting celebrity crush throughout my like entire life. So I am 100% for Ben Affleck, whatever he does, come over, rape me in the butt, I don't care, just fucking do it. Ben Affleck, thumbs ups. And yeah, he looks fucking good as Batman. He's got the fucking face shape for the fucking mask and shit and the body for the suit. Mm. And he's tall. Yeah. Corey Cripps asks, will you suck my dick? No. Jambrez asks, what is the one quote, say your life, your- that's bad, not gonna read it. Jambrez, get better. Not now, not here asks, do you and Jay want kids? Neither Jay nor I, together or separate, ever want kids. I'm very much opposed to kids, like vehemently opposed to kids. Particularly babies. I feel like there's a certain type of person that should be a parent and that way too many people are having kids right now. I think the tradition behind it makes people feel like they have to do it when really they can just focus on themselves and have a wonderful life and not overpopulate the world. Cole Wilkins has three questions. One, what wouldn't you give up for gaming? I think the only thing I wouldn't give up for gaming is probably Jay. Two, I'm going to be starting a gaming YouTube channel soon and I would like to know if you have any tips slash advice for me. There are so many gaming channels out there that you have to establish what is different about you. Like, are you really funny and ridiculous? Do you have a crazy look? Were you like an ex-lawyer and now you're playing video games? You gotta find your niche. And the commentary is almost as important as the gameplay. So you don't have to be like amazing at games if you have good commentary and the other way around is true as well. You can be amazing at games and not have the greatest commentary. But finding a balance between the two is the best. And starting off you're probably gonna have to play all of the newest games to get people's attention. Or maybe be the guy that only plays retro or indie games. Speedruns, something has to be different about you because there are so many channels and so much competition that you basically just have to go for it. And make sure your production quality is good. A guy can be hilarious and great at games, but if you can't understand what he's saying in his mic or it's just a terrible quality render, nobody's gonna watch you. Hopefully that helps. Salazar asks, what would you like your legacy to be? I don't really care about legacy. I'm dead after that and people who care about that seem really silly to me. It's like they need to make their life worth something when really you could just live your life. What five places would you like to visit or do a photo shoot? I mean, I've always wanted to visit Japan and Germany obviously and I'd like to, you know, see where Jay grew up in Serbia, but really I fucking hate traveling. And I've done photo shoots all over the US, so what is your biggest dream? My biggest dream is to just continue to be myself and continue to improve on everything that I'm doing right now and get to a point where I know I'm financially stable and buy a house. What is the biggest amount you will let a patron donate? I mean, I don't think there's a cap, but I have the biggest package that gets everything at 250. But really, you don't need to donate to me in order to make me be appreciative of you. And then he says, all our best, super amazing gamer wonder girl. Thank you, Nino. Rubber Tongue asks, what would have been your second choice of job if you would not have done what you do now? Well, obviously full-time modeling, but I guess that kind of counts as what I'm doing now, even though I don't have the time to be full-time anymore. Outside of any entertainment job, I would say I would want to be one of the high-profile criminal psychologists or a writer. I really want to do the high-profile criminal psychology thing because I'm super fascinated by psychopaths. Killers, what motivates people to do things, things that make certain people have certain kinds of pathologies. It's just so interesting to me. And I'm also just good at writing, so there's that. But I can't imagine enjoying life as a writer. I would just enjoy creating, but I wouldn't enjoy anything that goes along with it. JD23Walton asks, what is the weirdest thing that turns you on? I have a lot of weird things that turn me on 
down. Uh, two of the weirdest things would probably be masks, which a lot of you guys know, and I really like sweaty guys. Like, the smell of sweat, even the smell of armpits, sweaty balls, yes. It's just like an excretion of manly fluids to me. <laughs> All right, that was 90% of the questions asked. Hopefully this isn't gonna be too long of a video or take too long to edit, fuck. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Post in the comments if you want me to continue doing this. Like to switch it up a little bit. Oh, this is another kind of fan service. It might not be so sexual, but you guys get your most personal questions answered. Thank you so much. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and please, I implore you, check out my other channel, youtube.com slash Games. It's down in the description along with all of my other links like Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. All, by the way, are slash Babcock. I'm on Twitch, live streaming almost every day for like fucking six hours, so you should come check me out if you're ever awake at that time. All right, guys. I love you so much. Please let me know what you think of the series. Like, let me know. Like, seriously. Also, I love you guys. The amount of support you guys show me is always very surprising. I am forever in your debt as far as appreciation goes. Bye, guys!